All right, let's use Stigman Watcher. Stigman Watcher's uh, source code is available out on GitHub, and it's a Node.js application, so we'll actually be executing the, the, the source code. Uh, we have a couple ways to get the source code. If we have the Git tooling available to us, we could do a Git clone from this address, or we can download the zip of the code, which is perfectly fine to do as well. So we'll download that. And we'll double check that we've met our uh, prerequisites, our requirements. We need Node.js Node 14 or better installed. So that's something uh, you'll have to get in your environment prop, maybe. Uh, you also need Keycloak and the Stig Manager API, which if you're part of the Stig Manager pilot is available in your environment. Um, now, both of those need to be configured ready for Stigman Watcher, right? Keycloak, for example, we covered this in an earlier video, needs to have an appropriate client. I have built a client called Stigman Watcher. I'll sanity check it. It's got service accounts enabled. That's a check. It's got credentials, client ID and secret. I'll copy that secret into my clipboard. And I've got client scopes configured properly. Stig Manager Collection and Stig Read are what that client's going to need. Stig Manager itself needs to have a collection that is going to benefit from the watcher. Uh, so I built a new collection. It has ID 96. We'll need to remember that. Uh, the Stigman Watcher service account has been granted managed level access to the collection. And the collection has no assets at the moment. So we're going to change that once Stigman Watcher starts running. Let's go take a look at what we downloaded. There's our zip. We can extract that. In this directory are the, is the source code. Uh, for our purposes, a file we need to pay attention to is .env. That's how we're going to configure the tool, at least during this demonstration period. It, it simply sets the values of all the environment variables that the tool needs. And these are documented on the GitHub page, so we're not going to go through all of them now. The ones I need to change for the demo, there's that 96, right? So it's going to be collection ID 96. Need to make sure that my authority value is correct. This is the Keycloak server. So that would be the uh, uh, host name and port of the Keycloak server. That will probably be different for you. That portion I've got highlighted, but auth realm stigman is most likely going to be uh, correct for you. Here's our client ID and our secret, which was pasted to the clipboard and a copy to the clipboard. I've now pasted it. So it looked like it was exactly what was already in there. Uh, we need to set that. We need to specify what directory we're watching. And you'll see two references here. The, it's not that it will watch two directories. It's the, the, the second occurrence is the one that takes effect. I just wanted to show that you can specify UNC paths. Uh, as you see here, the slashes switch direction. Before, so they need to be Linux style slashes and they'll work even on a Windows installation. Um, so we only need this one. So this is this is going to watch a directory named watched uh, relative to where we start the code. So we have to make sure that directory exists. Uh, this tells us where the API is. Usually that is going to be exactly the same host name and port as the client. Right. And later we can cover what these other environment variables do. But I want to keep this video as short as I can. So I'll save off my env file. All right, so I think I'm configured right. Let me go to my command line and what did I call this thing? Stigman Watcher main, right? So, oops, that should be AL. Take a look, yep, all those files look right. Uh, this is the source code minus the dependencies and that's very common. That's how node apps are usually delivered. Uh, so we need to install the dependencies. The good news is that's easy to do with npm ci. So that brought in the libraries that are, uh, are that this tool is dependent on. Um, and that should pretty much get us installed. That gets us ready to go. Now there's lots of ways to run a node app. Uh, you can run it under a process manager that keeps it running. There's ways to get it going under cron uh, as, a, as a daemon or as a service beyond the scope of what we're doing here. We just want to demo the thing. Um, now, I want to start it up, but I just remembered I didn't create my directory. So let's make a watched directory, which is empty right now. So there's nothing in it. I have a source of CKLs up here, so I can kind of drag. I probably won't drag and drop. I'll copy and paste uh, uh, into it. And uh, 
to show nesting, I've got uh, a couple folders. Uh, the multi-folder is CKLs with multiple STIGs uh, per CKL, and we have nesting, you know, files down at different levels of nesting. Um, and then the single directory starts uh, a nest of some CKLs with only a single uh, STIG set of STIG results in it. All right, so that will be the source stuff that we'll end up moving into watched. Now let's fire this thing up. Uh, and the way to do that is to say node index.js, and then we're going to pass explicitly the env file that we're using. And if all goes well, which it seems to have, uh, the utility is going to sandy check that it can reach the keycloak service and fetch a token, which it did successfully and that it can then communicate with the Stig Manager API using that token, which it did. It, it had to make a couple requests, uh, uh, so it uh, sanity checked both, both of those. And now it's watching the watched directory. Let's go put something in watched. Uh, I can, I could take a single file from here, right? And copy it and paste it in. You'll see that what happened was the ad was detected uh, the file was parsed, it was put into a queue, and there was a little delay before the queue was processed, and that's deliberate because later we're going to be adding uh, you know, lots of files at the same time, and we, we want to kind of queue those up so we're more efficient. We, we process them in batches. What's happened is uh, the, the tooling recognized that the asset in the CKL was named Asset Windows 0301. It was a asset that did not exist in our creation, so in our collection rather, so it had to be created. And then there were some reviews in here. It was for the access stig, so not too many, right? 16 reviews. And it processed that stuff. Or at least it says it did. Let's go, let's go take a peek. Now, Stig Manager doesn't know that that happened, so I have to hit some refreshes, right? Uh, to, to ensure that I have up to date data here. Or I could expand my tree. Right? Because that's usually dynamic. Every time you, you expand a node, collapse a node and expand it, it's going to cause a, a new request. So, yep, it did. It added it. Uh, and we have results. And isn't that just fantastic? Uh, but that's one asset. I mean, that's not that exciting. Um, let's now go ahead and grab uh, this entire directory. So I'm going to copy that and we'll paste that in. And now we'll see that what's going on there is, you know, rather rapidly it, it fetched, uh, I'm actually not sure how, how big the queues are, maybe 25, 26 files. And in this case, these are all assets it's seeing for the first time, so it's creating them, right? And then posting the relevant reviews. So if we scroll up, uh, we might see how big our queue was. It was, it was I guess, 25, uh, which is the size of the, the queue. That's somewhat, maybe not as exciting as if I had made it bigger or smaller, but it just was a coincidence. Um, so, I mean, essentially that's what the watcher now will keep doing. Uh, I can select, um, and it of course handle the whole nested stuff. Oh, we should go check that uh, Stig Manager saw that stuff. So now we, yeah, we do a refresh. We see that these assets have been added. Yeah, there were 25 of them. Um, and I think, I think they all were the access stig, right? So, so if, we, oh, if I look at my assets again, now I have a lot more of them and they all have the access stig. We can do a little more than that because I have these multi CKL stigs over here. Again, I could grab a single one, right? I'll copy it and then I'll go ahead and paste that in here. So in this case, a little delay while the queue waits to be, get fold. Uh, in this case, it did not need to create the asset. So you're not going to see an entry that says the asset was created, but it did need to modify the STIG assignments because there are more of them now, uh, right? Because this is a multi-STIG CKL. So we get an indication that additional STIG assignments were made and then more reviews were, were, were made. And so what was that? Asset 0306. We bought back the Stig Manager. We look at asset 0306. We see that it now has you know multiple Stigs attached to it. If we refresh here, we see oh our statistics got worse. Uh, and if we refresh the Stigs in the collection, then we see that we have uh, more of them. But most of those are only attached to one asset. Let's finish the job. Let's get all of these multi Stig 
CKLs in here. I'll go ahead and I'll paste that in. And now the queue has a little bit more work to do. They're bigger files, uh, so it chugs along for a little bit, handled what it could, then handles the rest. And it's almost the same thing that we just saw, right? For the, for the most part, these, were, these required that we add additional STIG assignments. So, so that was done. If I brought one of these in again, uh, like I do there, uh, what we'll find is now it doesn't need to create the asset. It doesn't need to redo stick assignments uh, because you know, everything has stayed the same. So now it's just posting reviews, right? Uh, and if I were to delete everything from here and copy both of these, everything, right, and then everything should work just fine. Um, it's figuring out how, you know, when, when it reached the queue limit and so forth. And it's processing them as batches and that that's it. It's done. Um, it did, I see it did the 16s and it did a bunch of the, the multi stigs where we have more, more reviews. All right. I don't want to make the video any longer than, than necessary. I will, however, go back and just do one more. Let's do a refresh. Ah, yes. Now, now we're all in terrible shape here and we have 25 assets for all our stigs and, and, uh, if we go to our status report, we'll see the, you know, that we, we managed to get our collection uh, imported without having to really do a whole lot of work ourselves, right? No, no, not much click in there. Just had to start the, the watcher. So that in a nutshell is how the watcher functions. Um, it can, you kill it by control C. I believe the option we had set for this thing was to, let's go take a look. Add existing was true. What that existing means is that when it runs, uh, should it consider the files it encounters when it first starts up as new files? Uh, since that's true, if we were to fire this up again, it's going to start, it's going to treat everything like it's new. So you may or may not want that, right? Because it's going to be posting these reviews uh, multiple times and that creates history, right? That creates history over in the database and it, uh, it is what it is. So. Okay, I'm going to stop now. I think that uh, pretty much explains how the watcher functions.